Time for another episode of the Josh Cast. <clears throat> I'm uh, having a little bit of a, I'm having a moment. I'm having a thought. Um, here's here's how my brain works. Um, we find out that there's uh, no ICU beds available in the hospitals due to the uh, ongoing COVID-19 outbreak. And my brain goes, okay, that's good to know. Now I know how to torture you. And then I proceed to go, am I, am I having a heart attack? Is this a panic attack? Is this, is this an asthma attack? What is this? Why? I don't, feel, I don't feel 100%. I don't feel quite right. What's going on? So right now, I think my breathing's okay. I, it feels a little tight. It feels a little asthmatic. And then I, so now I'm like, oh, is this, am I, what's going on? Am I having a heart attack? What's, what, what it, like I, I, I pseudo, uh, uh, in a pseudo exaggerated way, described what's going on in my head. And then just now, that's what I did. And then it actually happened in my head. Is it a heart attack? Is it a panic attack? I actually went there. And uh, I don't think it is. I think it's me uh, being very, very nervous. I think everybody's very, very nervous um, uh, because they, you know, they storm people stormed the Capitol last Wednesday, which hasn't happened uh, since the War of 1812. It was 1814 when the British stormed the Capitol, and uh, uh, that was we had a good run. <laughs> And, and now it's uh, these people storming the Capitol. These people storming the Capitol. Um, I don't think the vast majority of people want, to, uh, want this to happen. I think it, this is a very small minority. And um, I get nervous when I look at this because, you know, amongst the minority of people doing this. There are white supremacists involved. And uh, I am I'm a Jew, and uh, we're, uh, white supremacists are not always uh, so thrilled with Jews. I, uh, I have yet to encounter a white supremacist group that's like, no, we're actually, we're fine with the Jews, it's just everybody else. We're, we're actually okay with the Jews. We like the movies they make. We'll let them live, but... Uh, Everyone else who's not white, we want to destroy. Um, and you know what? Uh, <laughs> let me be clear. Even if there was a group that was okay with Jews but hated everybody else, I would still be, A, afraid of them, and B, not, you know, that, uh, not at all interested in them. Um, but I, I find, uh, or I've noticed, or I've observed that... Um, uh, these are the type of groups that uh, that are scary, are very scary, uh, and uh, not huge fans of the Jews. So uh, it's the whole thing is very it's very frightening for me to watch, and I um, would like to think, you know, my my brain then goes, all right, well, you know, what what is this going to mean? How is this? Am I going to have to? Am I gonna have? To, am I gonna have to defend myself? Is this, are we getting Mad Max? Should I get a? Should I get a sports car that can be retrofitted to drive in a desert, and uh, a double barrel shotgun, and and uh, should I be saving children who are wandering in the desert? Am I gonna have to fight someone in a thunder dome or a dome like structure? Now, here's the difference between me and Mad Max. Mad Max is driving a sports car in the desert. I would, I would stick with the Honda. Uh, I think it's, it's more reliable. It's going to last longer. And I think it's going to handle the terrain better, frankly. The front wheel drive, probably better in the snow than the rear wheel drive. Not that he has an issue with snow. I know he's in the Australian desert. But, you know, you never know where it might, things might take him. I could easily see him being captured by pirates and they sail somewhere north and suddenly he's in a situation where he needs a car with front wheel drive. I could see that happening. Now why, I mean, and I could see them kidnapping him and his car and he escapes with the car, but he's in Siberia now. And now the car is, you know, it's just, 
sliding all over the place, and that's annoying, and a hazard. So if I had to, I, 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 would, I would go, I, I, if I have to go Mad Max, I'd go full Honda. <laughs> Going full Honda, there you go. But, um, yeah, so the events uh, are, uh, the events during this are, are very scary to me. The, what happened at the Capitol. Uh, and I don't suppose there's really anything I can do about it. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Uh, what to do because I don't want to uh, I don't want to act out of anger I think that that never really seems to work um, and I think you know we really do need to I wish we could I wish we could all be on the same page again I, I wish we could all be one happy family um, you know that I wish there could be a unifying agreement of the facts which just does not seem to be happening, and I don't know how to make that happen or what to do about that. I need to turn on my space heater because it's freezing in here. So if you hear a low rumbling in the background, um, that's, that's my space heater. Uh, I just, I have to turn it on. I, so I, the sound quality, which was already stellar, <laughs> is now going down. But um, I'm... Uh, yeah, just also just trying to be in the moment. I'm, I'm trying to accept the fact that I don't know what my future is. I don't know what my plans are. I only know that I'm miserable right now. I'm trying to be more present. I'm trying to combine all the best elements of Buddhism with all the best elements of Judaism. Be present, be in the moment, and hate every minute of it. <laughs> that's, that's really my... Uh, that's my mantra. Let go of the future. Let go of trying to control. Um, I, I, I want to stop getting upset over everything and getting nervous and paranoid. And, you know, I've heard this phrase that the best way to change something is to first accept it accept it as it is and when I truly accept it as it is then I think it creates a space where it can change um, or it won't and it just will always be that way and I fear that what that may be what's happening with me getting upset I think I'm, I'm I get upset that I'm that guy I think I'm that guy <laughs> I'm that guy who gets upset, who gets freaked out, and who gets upset. I don't think I'm going to turn 40 and go, you know what, I can, I can, I can be like Anthony Hopkins in The Edge now. Very, very obscure reference right there. I watched The Edge last night on YouTube. They had the whole movie on YouTube. Isn't that nice? I think it's because I got the premium YouTube, so they have access to um, mildly successful 90s movies. <laughs> That's what you get when you get the YouTube premium. But The Edge was a movie where Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin get stranded in the uh, Alaskan wilderness. Or maybe it was the Canadian wilderness. It was the wilderness. It was up north. And they get attacked by a bear and they have to defend themselves against the bear. And uh, Anthony Hopkins is this, you know, rich guy who's married to this hot supermodel half his age, and Alec Baldwin is secretly plotting to kill Anthony Hopkins so he can marry the wife and get the money, and it's, there's a lot of intrigue and uh, a lot of scenes of walking, <clears throat> like on the edge of a mountain range with Jerry Goldsmith music in the background. Why, you know, uh, here's what I love about, here's what I love about any movie where the characters are in the wilderness. They always have to walk 
th there's always like a mountain range or a, a sand dune range and they always have to climb to the top and then walk along the edge of the top. It seems like, you know, if, if their goal is just to, you know, find shelter or find uh, a human settlement so that they can survive, I just, why do you have to climb to the top of the mountain? I think it would make more sense to go around the mountain. Um, you know why they have to climb to the top of the mountain? Because that's the only way to get the scenic shot where they, the cameraman gets on the helicopter and they fly the helicopter around the people standing on the top of the mountain. And then Jerry Goldsmith does an amazing score around it. There's a lot of that in The Edge. And The Edge... I guess that's a decent name for a movie, The Edge. It's a little vague. Isn't that... Couldn't that be the title of every movie? <laughs> Is there, is there any movie where The Edge would not make sense? It, it almost, you almost could have just called it Conflict. The protagonist's arc, the movie. What are you going to see? I'm going to see um, uh, Climax and Resolution. Oh, what's it about? Well, it's, um, there's a protagonist and uh, he has to face some obstacles and he's either going to win or lose and we're not going to know until we reach the climax and then there'll be a, a short resolution where we find out what happens after he wins or loses oh who directed it john q director that's uh i've always heard that john q public that term John Q. Public. If he's supposed to be an everyman, why is his last name, or why is his middle initial Q? I feel like there are more middle names that would start with a, an E or a J or a something else than Q. Like if it's really an everyman, it should be like John J. Public or John A. Public, not John Q. Public. I mean, Q is a little, you know, a little specific. I could be like and call instead of saying ah John Doe, it's you know John Schlamazel. Oh, so he's that's a Yiddish John Doe, by the way, John Schlamazel. That's what they write on the the body tags of an unknown victim who looks Jewish. That's John Schlamazel right there. We don't know how he was killed. I'm going to solve the murder of John Schlamazel. It's going to take me to the edge. <laughs> the Edge, the movie that I watched, was written by David Mamet, uh, who's a great writer. And the dialogue is amazing. And the, that's why I keep watching that movie over and over again. That's why, I, now that I think of it, uh, a, any movie that's written by David Mamet, I think I've watched more than once, or a lot of movies. The other one he wrote was Ronin, that, uh, that Robert De Niro movie that came out in the 90s, which has some of the best car chase sequences that I think hold, are, are still better than most of the car chase sequences today. The way that they shot those car chase sequences was fanta fantastic. But that, one, that script was written by Mamet, too. Mamet's great. Love Mamet. I'm a huge Mamet fan. I wonder if there's a term for mammoth fans. A mammity? A, ma a mammotarian? I'm a mammotarian. I've been a mammotarian now for... I was Jewish, but I converted to mammotarianism. Mammotarianism, and that's where... Uh, replace... You just take the Bible, and, and wherever it says God, you replace it with the F word, and that's a mammotarianism. That's a, that's a low-hanging fruit joke. That's a low-hanging fruit joke. I feel great about it, but it's still a low-hanging fruit joke. Cheap shot. <laughs> Cheap shot to David Mamet. I've been talking about absolutely nothing for 14 minutes. I didn't, I, I didn't know 14 minutes had already passed as I was in this trance of conversation. I feel, um, I feel good about where I'm at with this. 
I feel great about where I'm at with this. So here's my concern. Like I, you know, I I really want to be the best possible stand-up comedian that I can be. It's important to me that what I do is has integrity. And I'm a little scared because you know, there's no way for me to perform in front of a live audience right now. And I've been doing the Zoom shows, which are great, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, will this work in front of a real audience? And I'm pretty sure some of it will. But at any rate, the other thing I've been doing to, you know, try to, um, you know, get get my rocks off comedically is doing these podcasts and doing little, inst you know, Instagram and TikTok videos. But there's no audience response. You know, there's no audience listening. And there are times where I do something and I'm like, oh, that, that feels great. That feels like I nailed it. But I don't know if I've nailed it or not. And uh, my big fear is that I have not nailed it and my instincts are totally off. <laughs> and... You know, five years from now, somebody's going to say, hey, I watched that TikTok video of you just eating a peach for a minute. And um, uh, what, what were you doing? And I'm like, oh, you, didn't get, you didn't get the comedic genius of that? You didn't get what I was trying to say? I was making a commentary on socialism and capitalism. Um, you didn't get that metaphor? <laughs> uh, no, no, you were just eating a peach. Oh. I see. Um, well, what I was trying to say is we, um, we have to come together in unity. Well, what does that have to do with eating a peach? Well, because the, there's that song, Millions of Peaches, Peaches for Me, and, and I, was, I was just trying to connect it to the song. But what does that have to do with people coming together? It, 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 um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm adrift. I'm no longer a part of a community. I don't know what I did with that video. It's all right. It's not comedy. It's abstract art. Go. That, by the way, I've heard. I, I can't remember the name of the comedian, but I heard another comedian talk about this. How with I've heard a few co comedians talk about this. That when it's abstract art or even music, it you don't rely on the audience having to, you know, immediately react a certain way. But with stand up. You know, it's not, if they laugh, it's funny. If they don't laugh, it's not funny. And that's, that's it. You either succeed or fail. It's, it's much more black and white. And uh, that um, frustration is plaguing me right now uh, to a degree. That, that is definitely plaguing me right now. It's like, I, you know, how do I know that this is... That I'm on the right track with this. How do I know that my David Mamet, my hot take on David Mamet, what if it doesn't land like I think it's going to land? Uh, something I learned when I was in the Landmark Forum, the idea that, you know, how our identity is interconnected with how other people in our community view us and what we do to create that view and it's all connected so if I never interact with anybody ever my identity is affected by that but then there's a part of me that says well I've interacted with people enough to kind of get the general idea so could I just never interact with anyone again and just maybe call myself a genius and we'll call it a day Ah. <laughs> uh, But that, yeah, that, see, that's, that, it, that it doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's what, what I'm trying to go for is what I think a lot of people want to go for, which is I want to be, you know, I want other people. I want good comedians to look at what I'm doing and, and, uh, and say that's good work, you know. I, I, that, I think, is the most important to me. I want to make sure that people who know what good work is which, I mean, is that the I mean, in stand up, the audience, the audience tells you, this is good, this is funny, or this is not funny. And it's very hard right now because I um, don't always have that, or 
Um, and so I, I have to go off of, you know, I have to throw this out into an echo chamber and hope that something lands. Maybe God will find it funny. It would be great. I think I, I, aver- I think right now it's, I'm averaging four listeners on this podcast, maybe. I don't know. The stats are very weird. It says 100 downloads but four listeners. So are there people that just download it but don't listen to it? No, I'm, I'm collecting these episodes for, <laughs> for future generations. But maybe one of the four listeners is God. Wouldn't that be something? So, God, what's on your playlist? Well, I'm listening to this sort of young, kind of middle-aged Jewish man um, talk about uh, being afraid. (laughs) It's it's fantastic. (laughs) I give it four stars from God. Yeah, I kind of think it's amusing sometimes. God, four stars. That's my hope, people. That's my hope. 21 minutes. Amazing. I don't even know what I talked about in this. What am I going to call? What am I going to title this? What am I going to call this? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs>